It's Jim Wald here. Today we're looking at Mortal Online 2 optimizations and potential crash fixes as well. We'll go into Windows first, do some changes, then NVIDIA Control Panel. If you're an AMD user, please refer to the video description for your walkthrough. So in the lower left hand corner, type the word game in the search bar, go to game mode settings, and make sure game mode is on. In the past, Microsoft did not do a good job with this. It was supposed to improve performance, but now it actually does. So turn it on if you had it off. It's going to make a difference in all games you play on Windows 10. Next up, go back to the search bar and type the word power, select power and sleep settings, and then look for additional power settings link. Click that. And within here, just make sure you enable ultimate performance. If you're a nerd like me, you may have a custom power plan, but for most people, just tick ultimate performance and you're done. Next up, go into Steam, wherever you have it installed, go to Steam Apps, Common, find Mortal Online 2, find the Mortal Online 2 EXE, right click on it, go to Properties, find the Compatibility tab, and here we're gonna check three different things, or I should say tick three different boxes. The first one is Disable Full Screen Optimizations. The second one is run this program as an administrator. And that right there can fix a lot of potential crashes. You can click apply, and then we're gonna to go to change high DPI settings button. At the bottom, click the override high DPI scaling behavior for the application. Hit okay, hit apply. Just make sure that you have all three of these settings ticked. Again, it's the one at the bottom, override high DPI and then it's disable full screen optimizations and run this program as administrator. Don't forget to click apply and okay for this. And that's all you have to do. Next in the open desktop, right click and go to NVIDIA control panel. Once this opens up, go to manage 3D settings in the upper left and you should see global settings and program settings. We're gonna start in program settings and we're gonna look for Mortal Online 2 in the drop down on the left. If you don't find it, you're gonna have to add it manually by clicking the add button. Once this opens up, you should see a second list and look for Mortal Online 2 here. If you find it, great, click it and add the selected program. Otherwise you have to browse to the same location you were using earlier for the Steam folder. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump back over to global settings and we're gonna turn off image scaling. Once you do that, when you go back to program settings and you scroll up, it should be grayed out. That's what you want. You don't want that turned on. Next up, we're gonna scroll down, make sure that low latency mode is off. If you have a high refresh rate monitor and its refresh rate is like 165, which is mine, which is an odd number, you're gonna to have to set your max frame rate here and within the game settings, have no cap or set it to unlimited frames. It's the only way to sort of match the frame rate to your monitor's refresh rate. If you have a odd monitor like I do, 165. Next up, go to power management mode and set that to prefer maximum performance. Pretty self-explanatory. You just get the most power out of the game by doing that. Next up, scroll down. You're going to find texture filtering quality. Set that to performance. It's just a slight change. It should give you a little bit more frames per second. Finally, threaded optimization. You're going to turn that on. And with that, just make sure that you do have all the other settings set like I do. If you have a G-Sync monitor, make sure that is turned on and enabled. Click apply, okay, and you're done. So next up, we're gonna launch from Steam in the lower right hand corner. And we're launched, but just make sure that the things that are in the task tray down there don't have anything running that you don't absolutely need. Like you may need Discord because you're talking to your friends, but other stuff, just close it. If it's not necessary to play the game, it shouldn't be running, okay? Now we're gonna run in DirectX 12 because I have an Asus Strix 2080 Ti, which is still a pretty good card. But if you have an older card, you might consider DirectX 11 because it requires less VRAM to run. You might get better performance in DirectX 11 too, more frames. So if you have any issues, try running 11, but I'm gonna run 12. So once we're in the game, we're gonna go to settings. We'll start on the right hand side first. The first thing I want to talk about is maintain vertical field of view. This is for people with widescreen monitors. We don't have that, so we won't enable it. Next one is enable multi-threaded rendering. You want to turn this on if your rig has more than six cores. So if you have six, eight, 12, 16 cores, enable this. 
If you have a low end system, consider running this or enabling this character distance CPU um, optimization feature. Basically, it will give you a little bit more frames per second. Again, if you have a lower end system, try 90 field of view instead of 103, because if you don't have to render as many objects, then you'll get more frames per second. If you have a low end system, try 100% draw distance. I'm gonna use 300%, but I'm just showing you what you might do to just get maximum frames. This is a 1440p setup. For shadows, I would recommend low. Foliage, I'd recommend low at first. Do cinematic for everything else. If you have an NVIDIA card, try DLSS. If you don't, try anti-aliasing. For the frame rate cap, you notice they don't have 165. That's why I did that whole thing in the NVIDIA control panel. If you have a 144 or 60 or whatever, just set it here. Don't set it in NVIDIA, okay? If you turn DLSS off or you have a Radeon card, maybe try doing cinematic anti-aliasing instead. If you have an NVIDIA card that's 2000 series or newer, try DLSS. As you can see, I had 165 frames per second there, so I know that my cap in my NVIDIA control panel is working. If I walk outside the dungeon, I get like between 120 and 150. If I'm inside the dungeon, it's a pretty stable 130 to 160. And if I stare at a ceiling or a wall, I'm gonna hit my cap of 165. Now, if you don't care so much about having maximum, maximum frames per second, then you can try increasing the draw distance, maximizing the field of view, getting rid of the character distance CPU utilization. You can switch to ultra quality instead of ultra performance in DLSS. You could even increase your shadows to medium and your foliage to medium, but I'm going to leave both of those to low because I don't care for that. So as you can see, I'm getting maximum quality. It looks beautiful to me. I'm getting 100 frames per second no matter what, and I'm peaking to about 130, it seems, maybe 140. If your frames are much lower than this, then you're going to want to consider lowering cinematic to epic across the board and just keep stepping down as needed. But until next time, see you guys out there.